Hello, Canvas family. Tansley Stearns here, and I am so lucky to be joined by Chris Brucher and our very talented, fearless leader, Todd Marksberry. And we're going to talk a little bit about the transformation that's happening to our building here in Lone Tree. So, Todd, maybe you want to kick us off, talk a little bit about purpose and the reason for the transformation? Sure, sure. So. When we first, um, so I've been here for three and a half years, and when I when I first got here in June of 2015, uh, my predecessor, uh, our retired CEO Dave Moss, had uh, he spearheaded the effort to purchase these two buildings um, here in, in Lone Tree. So uh, here on Park Meadows, we have two 75,000 square foot buildings. We had tenants in the building, but um, next door and a little bit here in this building. So when we came into this building. Um, essentially, we, um, in terms of our investment in the buildings, the investment was really for the buildings. And, and so we assumed the space and we, we thought uh, with, with Chris's help and the team's help, you know, we looked out into the future and said, here's what we think we can accommodate in this building. We found out very quickly when we, uh, within a, uh, a few months of moving into the building, as a company, we were, we were growing in leaps and bounds. And, and so we were looking out and saying, wow, that plan um, we probably have a much shorter runway in terms of the space. So when we looked at this building and looked at the square footage, we also, another thing, it, for those who had visited here before, there, were a lot, there was a lot of dead space, so a lot of square footage. I don't know what it would have been, Chris, a few thousand yeah, feet. Yeah, a few thousand square feet for sure. Um, that was wasted space with corridors that were unused, um, not efficiently used as well. So. We, could, we had corridors that were so big we could have played cornhole. Now we're looking back and saying, why, did, why weren't we playing cornhole? But um, it, we, we decided at that time, um, when you begin to look at, you know, how can we accommodate more employees, uh, you start to look at, do we want to knock, knock walls down, et cetera. And at that time, we just sat down, myself and, and Chris and, and David Pierce, and began to, to cast a vision for the future in terms of we, what we wanted this to look like. Not just... Um, being able to accommodate employees, but what's the vision? What kind of environment would, did we want for our, our uh, team? Mm -hmm. And we, we then made a decision, we're going to, to remodel the whole entire building and, uh, and then also um, add something on, to, on the roof uh, that would be great for our community, et cetera. So that, that's kind of how we got to where um, we made the decision to remodel. Is that what awesome. you were asking? Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. And can, I, can I add one other thing too? Something really that's cool that I'm really proud of too here at the company is not only do we take over these buildings, but there was a tenant called Zynex that actually had this whole entire building and they were struggling financially. So we were able to help them out, downsize them, let them out of a lease that could have taken them under. And now they have grown so much that now they moved on, moved out of our other building and have gotten bigger space again and are back flowing. That's uh, local jobs and everything that we help save as a credit union, so. That's a great story, yeah. Very cool. So Chris, tell us a little bit about what's <coughs> happening on the third floor now. Everybody's working, <laughs> supporting you guys right. out there and all of us in here. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, they uh, suffered uh, ever since uh, around April, May time frame downstairs in our temporary space, now where um, our, all of our second floor is as well. Um, but back up here, now they're flowing. We got um, some really cool atmosphere that's going on right now. Um, Todd um, allowed us to kind of change things up and make it more modern and then also make it feel with our Canvas family. And the inter can I say the interesting thing about what when um, Chris and his team mm -hmm. worked with uh, the architects when we made the decision in terms of the architects uh, and the builders, mm -hmm. we, um, we actually had to stage the way we were doing this and so we had to you had to start at the top of the building, mm -hmm. and we moved everybody out from the third floor down, as Chris was saying, into temporary space. We had these nooks and crannies down on the first floor. Uh, we brought in uh, some, some rented work, uh, cubicles and workstations. Uh, it, it felt like it was circa 1972 uh, uh, office environment, but we all moved down in there as they they demoed this whole entire third floor, blew everything out, knocked down all the walls, and then put in this new system that we're gonna get a chance to see in a minute. Yeah. And you know, several months later, we were all able to move back, right after the, all, the, all the weekend of the all-team yeah. meeting, as a matter of fact. Yeah. And when we moved in here, 
Then we took the folks who were on the second floor and, and moved them down to those, you know, the areas where we were before and demoed all of those walls, which I think we'll probably get a chance to see. Did we plan on seeing yeah. that? Yeah, we can run to the second floor and hey. see how open it is now. A little audible yeah. here. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but uh, everybody's being kind of um, displaced and, and inconvenienced uh, for several months at a time. And some areas, those folks who will ultimately land on the first floor, um, internal audit, marketing, um, human resources team, um, IT, you know, they'll be probably displaced and, and inconvenienced the longest mm -hmm. period of time, but uh, everybody's getting really excited. Nice. Yeah. So there's a lot you can read today about different kinds of things that people are doing with space. Can you both talk a little bit about not just your vision, but how that's being executed? Because, you know, there's been this trend over the last five or six years around you know, going completely open and there are pros and cons <coughs> with that. And we have something I think is really lovely and in between. So I thought it'd be interesting to hear your perspectives about where we're at. Yeah, so um, the big concept is the, is the benching style. So where everybody comes in and um, has this uh, basically a workspace, but trying to change um, it to this isn't your cube, this isn't your space. The entire space is your space. So um, some of the challenges that come along with that is like sound transfer, some lighting, um, some personal items, things like that. And that's all um, done by different uh, techniques. So one of them is we use a sound masking, which is a light, thi a light uh, sound up in the ceiling that makes it so it kind of covers um, the conversation. So you can definitely tell if you ever get a call from, you know, your direct TV versus maybe your, you know, Home Depot down the street, you can hear stuff in the background and one you can't. Well, you can't hear in the background on ours because of that sound masking. So there's little techniques like that that um, help achieve the end goal. And one of the things, too, uh, that we wanted to accomplish in the building as we were casting that vision, looking out, we said, we want to, we have, holy cow, we're in Colorado. Mm -hmm. We have this building with all these windows and, and just this unbelievable view and beautiful light. And, yeah. you know, they say we have um, more sunny days than San Diego, for goodness sakes, mm -hmm. California, as we all know. And we wanted to be able to... Um, allow all of the, the our family members to experience that in their work environment and, and that just helps for your morale and your energy and all of those things but so what you'll see is, is again we knock down walls and and we we wanted to put an emphasis on on very open mm -hmm. collaborative mm -hmm. um, and and then also where they could it, they could sit and enjoy it's not just um, executives out on the windows you know, experiencing the, the light and, and um, that energy, but, but rather everybody in the workspace being able to experience that as well. That sounds very cool. Well, speaking of that, maybe we can go and experience what's happening in the communication center. Should we do that? Sure. All right, Absolutely. awesome. All right, and here we are magically transformed into the communication center. So Chris, maybe talk us through a little bit of the physical space and what we're providing for folks here. Yeah, right now we're um, pro providing a wardrobe on this side allowed to hold the coats or any personal items as that. Um, we do have monitor arms too uh, that go onto the desk along with a movable surface in all the comm center. And um, a lot of people are like, oh, I love the sit stand. I love to be able to stand while I work and then be able to sit sometimes too. But beyond that, um, it's ergonomically more efficient. So there's certain ways to set up your chairs to make sure that you have the right angles and necks. To, so it all cuts down on a lot of the um, stresses of the work, you know, your carpal tunnels, your, you know, your neck extensions, all that kind of stuff where your shoulders hurt, your back hurt. So um, by going that route, it's allowed us to be more ergonomic that way. Awesome. So. Good. And Todd and I were just talking on Friday about that transition, you know, watching you know, some people still sitting, not quite sure about the standing yet. So we're easing into that change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, you know, it's it's been fun to watch when we... Um, I kind of think back, oh shoot, a week, week and a half before we moved into this particular area, everybody was getting super excited mm -hmm. about, man, we're get, those who were moving up here were getting really excited, in particular the folks in our comm center. And they were kind of sneaking up, we, they got word that we said it was okay to do that. 
And it's interesting because, um, and, and we'll get a chance in one of the other areas to see the stationary desks, um, not the, uh, um, the stand-up desks. And, and, you know, each one of the departments, um, the leadership teams in those respective departments voted on mm -hmm. what, what to use based on the functions of that particular area. And it was interesting because at first when people, um, for the, this particular setup here, it, it appears to be a little bit small and people were not super excited some, not mm -hmm. super excited. They were about the stand-up desk, but their workspace. Yeah. And then they came up here and they're like, hey, this is really, really cool. And then there were, Chris knows, there were people in other areas, um, whether they were moving up on this floor or they'll be in the next couple of waves, whose departments chose the stationary desk, mm -hmm. who came up and said, so can we, are we going to get those tasks? It's something that I think that the people have really embraced. Yeah. And of course, some of the folks on our team up here in the comm center are still getting used to it. Mm -hmm. uh, they like sitting down. But um, as you come through this particular area, you'll see people standing, sitting throughout the day, yeah. which is really nice. I think that we've talked to them about, and Chris has as well, about overcorrecting. They're suddenly like, right. we can stand all day. Yeah. And then you figure out, ah, it doesn't work out so well yeah, uh, right. on the old back or knees or what have you. So, but it is, it has completely changed the energy, wouldn't you say? In, in the, uh, yeah, for sure. It definitely has. Um, everybody's really excited and really able to kind of do their jobs um, and functions a lot easier than they could before and be feel better about it by the end of the day and not feel so worn out. And there's even some things too that I was thinking about too is like our daylight harvesting. Um, so for one, we everybody knows about LEDs. So we're going through and we're switching out LEDs throughout all the building to help uh, energy efficient. But also what we're doing is daylight harvesting, which is a sensor that says, okay, how much light is coming in through the windows versus how much light do we put out on the light fixtures. So what that does too is that helps our eyes too. So we're not straining when it gets darker outside or we're not squinting because it's too bright when the sun's fully out. So. Awesome. All right, so I think next we're going to go see our legal area. Very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we are in our legal area, and I think this is interesting to see because we've got some teams like legal and HR that need a bit more ability to come together in a more private and secure way, but also continue to have collaborative space. So talk to us a little bit about how that works. So this space is a little bit different. There is a little bit of return. There's a little bit more storage as well in the bigger cabinets. Um, for the people that need a lot more filing, obviously call center and certain um, business entities don't need that much filing. So this one um, accommodates for that. They also do have the wardrobe still. So, um, so that's nice to put the coats in and everything like that so you're not rolling it over with your chair. Um, and then also they do have, um, just like in the comm center, they have a pull out um, file drawer that you can sit on. So if someone comes up to you and you just have a little collaboration that you need to do just one on one, you can pull that out and that's got a seat cushion on it. So, yeah. Awesome. And it's a little bit more closed off. So if folks needed more privacy, you can take that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, for instance, this this whole area here has a lot of private conversations. Maybe some conversations that not everybody um, can be privy to. Um, so they do have their own entrance that they can shut off for the, during those times where they they cannot be um, in the public. So. Yeah. This is, this is again legal BSA compliance. Um, it, it's it's um, one of the one of my favorite places. And by the way. We'll also say, if you're looking around here saying, where is everyone? Uh, we haven't opened yet. Um, but uh, it, it, this is also where I like to, uh, as these two folks back here, guys, if you'll wave here, they know that I come in here on a daily basis and bust their chops because this is like the serenity now kind of area. They always keep the lights down. They have, uh, it smells like Bath and Body Works in here. Uh, it's very soothing. Uh, they also have puzzles and things over here that they do, but uh, this is probably one of my favorite areas, but as Chris said, it is a, it is a lot different than what you'll see in terms of um, out in the comm center and some of the comm, and, and though it'll be the same on the second floor, we'll have some open areas just like that as well. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna take you down to the second floor where things aren't quite as finished. Let's see what's going on there. Yeah. All right. So here we are on the second floor, a little bit different vibe going on here, but what can we imagine will be here in the coming months? 
Yeah, so this is a unique space because this will be open from one end to the other on both sides. Uh, this will be this side in particular is like our lo lending side, our loans, our operate loan operations, and those um, departments will be along here. So this will be all the way like the comm center, all the way from end, one end to one end, with the six foot cubes, um, with the sit stand um, stations. Um, here right now, they're working feverishly to get everything all done. As you can see, like all the ceilings are open, all the floors are open so they'll be coming in um, in the next few weeks and actually starting to paint things and um, put everything back together so yeah and this is what it looked like obviously upstairs when we vacated and we moved everybody down to the first floor they did the same thing they blew out wall I mean everything and then you see all this stuff hanging down from the ceilings uh, as Chris was saying this will be a, a unique space if you go upstairs where we were in the comm center yeah. At each end, it's very, very open, but on each end, on one end, you have, on the south side, south-ish, yeah. um, you have the um, uh, legal uh, area that we, show, we showed everybody. On, on the other end, it, it's the uh, member success team. So while you can see very open on this one particular side of the building, it, ca it kind of caps at the end. This will be end to end, right? Yes. Correct, yep, so allow even more light coming through. Um, offices are all shipped on the inside of this one, so yeah, just a lot more efficient. Uh, no more circle, confusing hallways like we had before, so. How long will this take? The second floor will be completed? Oh, we're, um, probably January, February um, time frame is when we'll be moving back down into this section, and then we'll start on the first floor at that point, so. And when's the anticipated date for the first floor? First floor is May. May. Right. Yep. So we got a little bit longer to go. It's a little bit rough, and I I thank all of you out there for being patient with um, all of the home office employees because I have cramped them into every little nook and cranny that we could possibly find. So um, thank you for being patient with them. If maybe they're not as cheery as what they could be if they had their <laughs> brand new space like this or the third floor. So. We'll all get there. And, you know, we talk about being shoulder to shoulder, you know, the main office going through this transformation, the branches going through the transformation. It may not all happen at once, but we are all headed in that same direction. So, right, yeah. and big kudos to Chris and his team for all this hard work. It's incredible what you're going through to make sure that this happens and happens as smoothly as it has. So. Yeah, thank you, and, uh, and thanks to everyone, like I said before, thanks to IT coming in behind us, because obviously they come in and help us make sure all the computers are up and going, and um, thanks to my team for putting all the extra uh, time in, and then the branches, Arvada, we just kind of finished them, and Ian shoots here right in the middle of it, so thanks to everyone for all this, so. Yeah, it's awesome, very exciting, great. Well, thank you guys so much for your time today. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next week as we enjoy being Canvas.